Fuck you and welcome to Punk Battles, the only show where I decide who is more punk. And I would know, I'm a pretty punk guy. Now, first up today, we've got Sex Pistols, legendary punk band, and the reason I learned how to do this phase. They were together for two and a half years, and in that time, put out only one album, never mind the bollocks. They're facing off against Chumba Wumba, who had hit songs, like that one your mom listens to when she's having a bad day, and nothing else, really. They were featured on albums such as 90s Mix, 90s Sports Anthems, 80s and 90s Hits, 90s Birthday Party, and 90s Nostalgia. So let's find out. Who is more punk, Sex Pistols or Chumba Wumba? Sex Pistols were a band formed by its manager, Malcolm McLaren, who had seen how big punk was about to be, and he wanted in. McLaren owned an expensive alternative clothing store called Sex, so he called the band Sex Pistols mostly to advertise for his store, which is kind of like a punk band being called the Calvin Klein Billy Clubs. Malcolm McLaren meticulously crafted the group's image, he gave them clothes to wear, and he wanted them to be as controversial as possible to generate free publicity. Probably the most musically talented member of the band, Glenn Matlock, left after repeated clashes with McLaren, later saying, It was just like being in the monkeys. Glenn was replaced by a friend of singer Johnny Rotten's named Sid Vicious. Sid was a heroin-addicted twink who was chosen by Malcolm completely for his look. He could not play bass at all and refused to learn. So when did they sell out? Well, I think it's fair to say that the Sex Pistols somehow sold out before existing. You know, it's kind of hard to come at them like, what happened to you, Sex Pistols? It used to be about selling expensive clothes, you know? But uh, yeah, at the end of the day, they're a boy band. And I know it makes people upset when you call the Sex Pistols a boy band, but first of all, being in a boy band doesn't mean their music is bad. Who doesn't love the bass line to Backstreet's back, okay? And also, they were formed as a product of market research, named, given clothing to wear, chosen more for their looks than their musical ability by one guy, Malcolm McLaren, who had complete control over them. Even their guitarist, Steve Jones, once said, He used to really get the hump, McLaren, when we started asking for money, so I stopped asking for it. We never had our own lawyer, which is insanity. That's the closest thing to being in one of these boy bands, is that they all get reamed, and we were getting reamed in that department. All right, Chumbawamba time. So before Chumbawamba was a band, they were a bunch of anarchists illegally squatting in a house together, spending their days liberating animals and organizing community services. One day, they happened to be at a musician's collective hanging out when someone asked how many people there were in bands. For a laugh, we sort of went, oh, we're a band, which we weren't. We were just a bunch of punks. He passed this paper around, so we wrote, Chimp eats banana, and we put our names down. About a week later, he rang us up, said, I've got a gig for you, man, it's in two weeks. And obviously, none of us, we couldn't play any instruments. So we thought, right, you be the singer, I'll play the drums, you play the guitar. We borrowed some stuff, and that's how it started. Chimp Eats Banana became Chumbawamba. They were together for about 30 years, and in all that time, they put out a ton of albums, many of which never ended up on Spotify. And while their musical style evolved from anarcho-punk to techno, dance, folk, and pop music, they never really lost sight of their anarchist roots, putting radical messages on all of their many albums. So when did Chumbawamba sell out? Well, they had already been a band for about 20 years when they signed with EMI, after years of criticizing the label, uh, being on a uh, compilation album called Fuck EMI, and one time smearing an EMI office with blood. A lot of people criticized them for being anti-capitalist, signing with a capitalist record label, and their response to that was essentially that all of the indie labels they'd been on before were just as capitalist, only they weren't as good at it. So if they really wanted a shot at spreading their anarchist message as far as possible, they needed to sign with a major label. And to be fair to them, this choice fairly quickly paid off with the release of Tub Thumping, the one song of theirs you've probably heard, that one about getting knocked down and getting back up again. I dare you, just try and listen to that song all the way through without being converted into a full-on anarcho-communist. It can't be done. Punk is associated with left-wing politics, particularly 
Anarchy, or actually this, this A stands for Ashley Simpson, but... So let's see how these two bands stack up. Now you've probably heard the song Anarchy in the UK before if you've ever been to karaoke night with me. It's a great song, very catchy, and it has the word anarchy in the title. But is it really an anarchist song? Johnny Rotten has said at various times, I've always been an anarchist. I am a natural born anarchist. I have never been an anarchist. What gave you that idea? Seems the only reason this song is about anarchy at all is because Johnny Rodden was looking for a word that rhymed with antichrist. And in the end, he never did find that word, but he decided to shoehorn anarchist into the line instead. At the time, he did know at least one real-life anarchist, the artist Jamie Reed, who created the band's iconic ransom note aesthetic you find on their posters and their album cover. And apparently Johnny Rodden had Jamie Reed in mind as he wrote this song. Anarchy is a widely misunderstood political philosophy to the point where in the last US election, both candidates for president denounced anarchists for their supposedly violent worldview. But in reality, the dream of an anarchist world shouldn't be that scary. Think of it not as a violent, chaotic society, but as an egalitarian one without rulers or unjustified hierarchies. Anarcho-communism essentially just means caring and sharing. Ancoms are basically care bears. And sure, some care bears may advocate violence as a method of getting us all to the magical land of Carolot, but it's less about violence and fires than it is about community gardens, collective housing, and excruciatingly long voting sessions. The thing is, anarchy in the UK is not about real anarchy. It's about fake anarchy, the kind everyone's afraid of. Its goal as a song is probably just to frighten the parents of Sex Pistols fans. Let's have a look at some of the lyrics that aren't just Johnny Rotten repeatedly saying, I want to be anarchy, which is not something you can be. It is a political philosophy, not a job. I am an antichrist. I am an anarchist. I don't know what I want, but I know how to get it. I want to destroy the passerby. Hmm, mutual aid, uh, expropriation, something about vouchers. I don't see anything in here about wanting to destroy passersby. Huh, well that can't be right. If anything, it looks like they want to help passersby. Huh. Anarchy in the UK lists off a few scary acronyms. They are the MPLA, the UDA, and the IRA. These are respectively a Marxist-Leninist group in Angola, a Loyalist group in Northern Ireland, and a group that fought to bring about a republic for all of Ireland. You'll notice none of these groups are in any way anarchist, but they are all violent uh, groups that killed a lot of people who would have presumably been pretty alarming to hear on a song that your British child was listening to in 1976. So again, it's more about violence than it is about actual anarchy. I still like this song, but I can't help but wonder what would it sound like if it were about real anarchy? Probably a little something like this. Anarchy for the UK, rebuilding society with mutual aid. Hierarchies must meet the burden of proof for their existence, and if they cannot, they will be dismantled. I... Yeah, no, it just, it just doesn't have the same... Uh energy to it. it just doesn't have the same energy to it that's the problem as already mentioned chumbawamba has been an explicitly anarchist collective since the days they were all squatting in a house together they have albums and songs about anarchy and their early albums on agitprop records contained liner notes educating their fans about its principles anarcho-syndicalism is a branch of anarchy that advocates workers rights and unions as a path towards an anarchist society Chumbawamba certainly seems to think along those lines. They formed a partnership with the Socialist Workers Union. They would hang out in working men's clubs. They would participate in strikes and picket lines, either by just joining the protesters or performing for them. Uh, during the UK miners' strike, they handed out pamphlets, donated food to miners' families. They released a miners' benefit album, and they even formed a theater troupe to entertain the miners' children. Unlike Sex Pistols, Chumbawamba sometimes could actually make people less afraid of anarchy. When they performed at the Rosie O'Donnell show, she introduced them as 
the nicest bunch of anarchists I've ever met. When their song Tub Thubbing blew up, Chumbawamba performed it at the Brit Awards, surrounded by anarchist flags and dressed in the anarcho-communist colors red and black. They were angry at the center-left political party Labour at the time for not supporting the UK docker strike, so they changed some of the lyrics of Tub Thumping to He drinks a whiskey drink, he drinks a vodka drink, he drinks a lager drink, he drinks a cider drink. New Labour sold out the dockers, just like they'll sell out the rest of us. Watching old Sex Pistols footage, you might notice there's an odd amount of swastikas in the crowd and on stage. Sid Vicious loved his Nazi t-shirt, Johnny Rotten wore this stupid shirt many times on stage. Malcolm McLaren, who was at least part ethnically Jewish, would hand out Nazi armbands to Sex Pistols and their associated acts before shows. Which led to an incident where the band The Clash told Sex Pistols that they couldn't perform with them unless they all took off their Nazi armbands. So. They're not in this contest, but I'm giving The Clash a point for that. So far, they're beating the Sex Pistols. Now, personally, I don't think they were Nazis. I think they were just trying to upset people exactly like when they talked about anarchy. You know? I think the fact that Johnny Rotten ever wore this stupid fucking shirt that was from Malcolm McLaren's sex store, which has both a swastika and the words, I am an anarchist on it, should kind of give away the game that they were just being edgy boys. Funny thing is, though, that just because they weren't Nazis, making a bunch of edgy references to Nazis actually made real Nazis feel welcome in the punk scene. Who would have guessed? Around this time is when the oi punk genre started, which contained many bands who were literal Nazis, and some who weren't Nazis, but just refused to condemn Nazis for some reason. Great! Chumbawamba had a pretty clear stance on Nazis, which was that they are bad, which I would say is the correct stance. In their song, The Day the Nazi Died, Chumbawamba critiques historians who act like Nazis disappeared off the face of the earth the second World War II ended. So if you meet with these historians, I'll tell you what to say. Tell them that the Nazis never really went away. They're out there burning houses down and peddling racist lies, and will never rest again until every Nazi dies. They also really hated those fascist oi bands, and early in their career they pranked a bunch of them by recording an oi-style song under the fake name Skin Disease which was actually included on an Oi! compilation album. The lyrics to the song are just the words I'm thick repeated 64 times, which I guess is technically a prank. I'm not sure if I get it, to be honest, but I like the energy. Jokes on you, racists, jamming out to a song written by people who don't respect you. Got them. Nazis owned. I'm thick. <laughs> sure. All right, let's get into the fun stuff, the punk antics. What were the Sex Pistols punk antics? Well, let me tell you, they were very rude to interviewers. Very rude, honestly. It's great. Watch, uh, watch a compilation of Johnny Rotten just being a dick to interviewers for no reason. It's fun. The band's first time being interviewed on live TV, Johnny Rotten said the word shit, and Steve Jones called the host a dirty fucker and a fucking rotter. This incident led to them being dropped by their label EMI, and according to legend, Malcolm McLaren was very angry about this until the band experienced a surge in popularity when he started to claim that it was their profanity was all his idea. I just love the fact that McLaren probably supplied this dude in the background with his Nazi armband, but thought that say, calling the host a dirty fucker was a little bit past the line of decorum, even for punks. Okay. Chumbawamba has had a lot of great punk antics, so let's just let's just go through them real quick. Vocalist Alice Nutter was dragged in the British tabloid press for saying in an interview, We like it when cops get killed. Nothing can change the fact that we like it when cops get killed. We mean that. You choose sides, don't you? On Bill Maher's show, she also encouraged their broke fans who couldn't afford it to just steal their album from a large chain store like HMV or Virgin. Chumbawamba was offered one and a half million dollars by Nike to use tub thumping in a World Cup commercial, which they turned down in a decision that apparently took them about 30 seconds to make. They 
did sell music rights to General Motors for a commercial, uh, but they donated the entire $100,000 to activist groups who used it to start an information and environmental campaign against General Motors. They recorded an album called In Memoriam Margaret Thatcher in 2005, which they didn't release until 2013 after they had already split up as a band just to coincide with the death of the famously anti-union Margaret Thatcher. And finally, my favorite, at those same Brit Awards where they had the anarchist flags, vocalist Dan Burt No Bacon went up to UK Deputy Prime Minister John Prescott and poured an entire bucket of ice water on his head. Amazing. Sex Pistols would never. Now, another way to judge punk bands is by seeing how influenced they were by the most punk band of all time, Sex Pistols. Now, while the Sex Pistols have never once claimed to have been influenced by Sex Pistols, zero points, Chumba Wumba, on the other hand, has repeatedly and clearly claimed Sex Pistols as an influence, and they even put out an album about not voting called Never Mind the Ballots. So, yeah, they're getting the point for that one, too. So... Who's more punk? Well, I tallied up the score, and it turns out it doesn't matter. It's really not punk to argue about who is more punk. When the Sex Pistols started, they didn't even know about the word punk, so there were no punk rules to follow. But at the same time, I mean, obviously, Chumbawamba is objectively more punk than Sex Pistols. I mean, who could even argue otherwise? I like Johnny Rotten uh, voted for Trump twice, supported Brexit, and said all lives matter as recently as 2020. So, fuck that guy, to be honest. Hey, maybe your definition of punk is different than mine. Maybe you think punk is just about making people upset. And by that criteria, I guess Sex Pistols probably are more punk than Chumbawamba. Their music and their behavior was specifically designed to upset the parents of the kids listening to it. And by that metric, Lil Pump is also extremely punk. Lil Punk, more like. Making this video, I've listened to a ton of Chumbawamba, and I gotta say, I kinda love it, especially their early albums that are more punk. I'll link a few in the description if you're curious. And also, I still listen to the one album Sex Pistols made sometimes, because I like it. I've decided that for me personally, art doesn't always need to be justified by its politics. Art can exist for its own sake. And yes, good politics make art better, but it can still be good without it. So I'm not gonna shame you if you still listen to Sex Pistols. That would make me a huge hypocrite. I'm only going to shame you if you still think they're the most punk band of all time. They're not. This has been Punk Battles with Chill Goblin. Fuck you and good night. <laughs>